Welcome to the seventh Java tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about conditionals and there are three types of conditionals that we'll be dealing with. Now in this tutorial we're just going to be dealing with the most common conditional, the if statement. So a little bit, a little bit of background on writing computer programs. Your computer program could have hundreds of lines of code. There are going to be many times when you do not want to step through every line of that code. It just doesn't make sense. You would create a lot of unnecessary overhead. You will need to be selective about what code gets executed. And in order to achieve that, you can use conditionals. So in terms of the program, you want to think about if statements you're giving the computer a decision to make. And it could be A or B. That's just a simple way to look at it. So if it's A, it will execute this block of code. If it's B, then it will move to that block of code and execute that. So that's really just a simple way to think of that. It's just a decision that your computer is making. Alrighty then, so let's create a if statement. We're gonna first though create a vari variable called touchdown. And we're going to say that's equal to six. And then we're going to create the if statement. And you guessed it. You just type in if and open parenthesis. This is where all of the action takes place. This is where the condition goes. And a condition, an easy way to think of a condition, it's just a test. We're testing to see if this is true. So we're going to type in touchdown, the variable. And we're going to use an operand here in equals equals. Now the equals equals operand is not saying that touchdown is equal to six. It's just testing to see whether it's equal to six. And if it is equal to six, then we will go ahead and do something. If it's not equal to six, then we will do something else. So again, it's that decision making process that I was talking about earlier. So keeping that in mind, we need to add another statement if a touchdown is scored. So we're going to add a squiggly bracket and we're going to do a system.out.print if the condition is true and we will say a touchdown was scored. So this, so if it equals six, we will go ahead and do a system.out.print a touchdown was scored. So now let's add a condition if the statement is not true. And we accomplish that by adding the else statement. The if and the else statement work together. If the condition is true, we will go ahead and print this out. If it is not true, the program will move to the else statement. We do that by typing in else. We will need another open squiggly bracket and hit enter. We get a closed squiggly bracket. Now we're going to print out to another system.outprint for the else statement. And we're going to say here a touchdown was not scored. And we're getting some IntelliSense here, else without if. So that's telling us they need to be attached. And why are they not attached? Because we have to get rid of this semicolon. See how nitpicky code is? OK. So now, again, all the IntelliSense warnings are gone. And we can go ahead and run this now. So let's do that. So again, we're, this should match the condition of 6. So we should get we should hit this first statement here and it did it says a touchdown was scored now let's change this value to three so a field goal was kicked instead so now it does not match six so let's go ahead and run this and you'll see a touchdown was not scored so it did not match the true condition so it hit it moved to the else and printed out a touchdown was not scored so that's pretty much it for if statements oh one more thing Let's go back to this if statement and the condition here, and let's discuss the operands again. Again, the equals equals test whether this is exactly equal. This variable is exactly equal to 6. So the equals equals is saying, is this exactly equal to what this variable was assigned to here, the value that was assigned? But we can also test to see if it's not equal to that. And we do that by typing in an exclamation point equals. And that will basically say, is this not equal? You also have your greater and less than signs. So if we put in a less than sign, we're saying here is 6 less than 3. And we can switch that and say greater than is, and then in this case we're saying is 6 greater than 3. You can also add equals 
to the greater or less than sign. So we could add an equals here. And what we're saying here now is 6 greater than or equal to 3. And we, and we can flip that, and we're now saying is 6 less than or equal to 3. So that's how that works. Alrighty, so that will wrap up this tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.